Welcome everybody to um, the Adoption Engagement Forum on Wednesday, it nearly said Friday, but it's now on a Wednesday, uh, 6th of March 2024, um, in our new slot for the first time, and so uh, I was just uh, chatting just before we got going, um, but uh, now on the meeting recording, I sort of remind everyone that we've now switched the AEF from its previous Friday morning slot to this new slot on Wednesday. Um, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and the AEF will take place every four weeks now um, with the uh, alternating between the W3C. Um, so there'll be a meeting every two weeks, um, but it will alternate between the AEF and the W3C group. So hopefully that should, once we get into the rhythm, um, you know, make that much cleaner and easier um, and more consistent for everybody to keep track of, of what meetings are going on, when, when and where. Um, but if you're in doubt, um, please uh, keep an eye on Slack um, and, and take a look at the Open Active Community Calendar, which is linked to in Slack. Um, and uh, that should be up to date with all, all the latest times and dates uh, of all the meetings. Uh, usual reminder that if uh, you're new to the group or if you're, if you're watching the recording and catching up with the meeting and you're new to Open Active, then please do join our Open Active uh, Slack workspace. Um, great place to keep up to date with uh, all the latest and uh, chat with other people in the community and um, share any uh, new things that you're up to, any questions, any challenges, all of that sort of thing. Um, it's a you know, really welcoming community, so, so please do join. Um, and uh, these slides will be linked in the meeting description if you are watching the recording, so you'll have all, all the links there. Um, a quick look at what we've got on the agenda today. So we'll do usual round of um, introductions just to to help everyone uh, get get to know each other and work out who who's on the call. And um, then Andrew is going to run through a quick update on um, the latest with Sport England's uh, funding uh, and the the phases and and how the ODI's involvement and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so that will be good. And then I'm going to give a quick update on um, what we've been up to in the last month or two um, regarding use cases. Um, and then, yeah, should be plenty of time for, for questions, chat, discussion as well. So if you've got anything you'd like to raise um, towards the end of the meeting, then then that would be great. So as I say, start with the usual round of introductions. Um, so I'll start. My name's Tim Corby, and I'm a consultant at the Open Data Institute, which is funded by Sport England uh, to steward the Open Active Initiative. Um, and in no particular order, I'll come to you next, Andrew. Hi, I'm Andrew Newman. I'm the Principal Data Specialist here at the ODI, um, and I am responsible for the delivery of our Open Active programme. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, Darren? Hi, I'm Darren Temple. I'm a consultant with the ODI wearing a technologist hat for the Open Active project. Thanks, Darren. Uh, Emma? Hi, I'm Emma Gooch. I'm the Data and Insight Manager at Yorkshire Sport Foundation. Thanks, Emma. Uh, Yasmin? Hi, I'm Yasmin. I work at Active Kent and Medway. I'm Everyday Active Officer, and part of my role is to work on our Activity Finder. Great, thanks, Yasmin. Uh, Tom? Hi, everyone. Good to see you. I'm Tom Marley from Played, and we make sport and physical activity easier to find and book online and work with a number of uh, lovely people on the call. I'm also, um, I was just about to write a message, and I can only stay to 1.30 because I've double booked myself, so um, just giving the heads up so it doesn't look rude if I just vanish and, and never come back. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, we won't take it personally. Um, Grace? Hi, I'm Grace from SAS, which is the Sports Activity and Sports Partnership, and I'm the Open Data Project Officer looking after their Activity Finder. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Grace. And Jules? Hi, I'm Jules from York Sport Foundation. I'm the Communication Manager. Brilliant. Thanks very much, everyone, and thank you for, for joining. Um, great to see you all here today. And um, so, yeah, really good. Good to have you and thanks for joining. Um, so without further ado, I'll crack straight on with the agenda and I'll hand over to Andrew. Uh, cool, thank you, Tim. Um, so first of all, if anyone was at the W3C two weeks ago, this will be a little bit repetitive. Um, I'm not gonna apologize for that. I think it's really important that everyone understands where we are with our sporting and funding. Um, 
and I'll try and tailor this a little bit to the interest of the AEF rather than the interest of the, the W3C. <clears throat> so as, as everyone knows, as part of the Open Active Initiative, um, the Open Data Institute has a role as the steward of Open Active. Um, and that role is part of, a significant part of the initiative, but not the whole initiative by any means. Um, and that, that stewardship of Open Active has been funded um, by Sport England through National Lottery grant funding. Um, and uh, we were, before Christmas, we were in phase five of Open Active uh, and uh, we were kind of getting towards the end of the available funding, which ran out on 31st of December. Um, and we had some conversations with Sport England about what we would do next. And we agreed that actually it would be sensible to extend phase five um, because we hadn't completed all of the things that we wanted to complete within that period of time um, and actually that's that's okay and acceptable to Sports England because the the logic model which you can see on the slide there which we used as the basis for the um, proposal for phase five was actually a logic model uh, to run over three years which had been developed with Sports England so it was logical to extend to phase five to cover that whole three-year period and that's what we have done uh, so through through autumn uh, winter ODI developed a proposal in partnership with Sport England. Uh, we were solicited to make a, a formal bid to Sport England for funding, which we did, uh, and we secured funding to continue delivering against this logic model uh, until the end of June 2025. <clears throat> if we jump onto the next slide. Um, the, the extension is structured around the existing work packages that we had designed right at the start of phase five with Sport England. Um, that's logical because it is an extension, it's not a new phase of work. Um, but what we've done is we've tweaked the work that is in the scope of each of those work packages um, to make it more focused um, uh, and to help us achieve some, some long-term aspirations for, for the initiative. I think the other thing that I'll say is because this is lottery funded, um, lo lottery funding can't be used for kind of operating organisations. So, so lottery funding can be used to develop new ideas, new services, new products, uh, but it can't be used to sustain those in the long term. Uh, and Sporting will be really clear that actually this funding for the extension is probably the last lottery funding that can support ODI's stewardship of open active. <clears throat> and we kind of knew that was coming. We, we, we generally lost the lottery were only funding for 10 years. Open active has been around since 2017. So we're kind of racing towards those that, that, that 10 year new deadline. Um, and I think that gives us one really important piece of contextual information. Uh, and that is that one of the aims of the extension is to establish some sort of independent entity that will be able to steward open active in the long term uh, and that's really what our governance work is going to be about in in the extension period so in phase five we uh, did some research into potential operating models for data institutions for open active uh, we looked at other institutions that already exist and how they operate uh, we looked at some of the legal implications and produced quite a big report um, which, which which was presented to the steering committee uh, with the recommendation that either Open Active is spun into a, uh, a sub-company of an existing entity or spun out into a fully independent organisation and actually the best approach might be to spin Open Active into a, 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 a a subsidiary of an existing company and then step out to an independent organization so within this this extension period we have some funding from sporting events to develop an operating model and an organizational design and a business plan for that new organization and entity uh, to then implement that that design and to secure funding to enable that organization to exist in the long term so, so in work package one, it's really about engaging policymakers, engaging potential funders. It's about design of an organization. It's about right-sizing that. Um, it's about doing all of that work. And the aim is to, um, and actually this is kind of an overall aim for, for the extension is to, to get open active into such a state that it can survive 
on its own as an independent initiative. Um, <clears throat> so that's work package one. Um, it, within that work package, um, we're going to do a few. The aim is to have a well governed initiative with capacity to move to a not for profit organisation. Um, we are going to, as I've said, we're going to develop this operating model that, that defines what the new organisation needs to do. Uh, we're then going to design the organisational design, which is the design of the people you need to do those things, deliver those things the organisation is going to do. Um, and then the business plan is the defines the funding and where the funding comes from and how, how the organisation will sustain it. Um, I, th I think one thing about it, it's interesting that Open Activist is quite a lot of volunteer effort put into maintaining Open Active and we need to accommodate that within the organisational design. Um, so, so that piece of work will be kicking off um, over, over the next three months or so with the aim of being ready to transition to that new organisation uh, in the last third of the grant period. Um, so that's from January next year, essentially. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we have built into that, that governance work package is some work to engage um, public sector policy leads uh, and uh, business leaders in the development of Open Active. Um, we think that there's uh, quite a strong argument that there should be some public funding for Open Active. Um, and we, the way to get to that is to influence policymakers. So we're going to spend some time doing that. That we equally think there might be a case of some public private sector organisations uh, contributing to Open Active, and we need to understand what that might look like and how we might design that as well. Um, uh, and then the, the last bit of the governance section is essentially keeping the governance of Open Active in its current state going. So servicing the steering committee, uh, the AEF, the W3C making sure those groups are active and making a real contribution to the initiative. <clears throat> uh, second work package is our, our infrastructure work package. Um, this is, the, the focus for the extension is on stabilising the infrastructure so that when that new organisation arrives, it's got an infrastructure that is manageable and maintainable and they understand, the organisation understands what it needs to do to develop the infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> so, so to enable us to do that, we've got four work streams here. Uh, the first one is around improving the user journey. So, so actually, we know that the user journey through Open Active isn't ideal at the moment. Uh, we know that the developed content can be quite complex, um, and it's going to get a little bit more complex in the short term. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but actually, how do we improve the, the the journey through that content for people trying to implement Open Active either as publishers or consumers of data? So we will we will do some user research. We will improve the user journeys, uh, and we'll deliver changes to how some of the information about Open Active is presented to make it easier for people to go from from not being a publisher or consumer to being a publisher or consumer. Uh, the second package of work here is about making it easier to support and maintain the infrastructure. Um, we need to do some work on our processes to make it. Um, to make us better at uh, handling issues when they're identified and resolving them in a timely manner, uh, of managing backlogs of tasks that we have, um, and, and kind of reporting on progress with the infrastructure. Uh, we're going to pilot, uh, do some work to pilot an open source maintenance model. Um, that will come slightly later in the, in the, in the extension, uh, but the idea here is that we will have this backlog of tasks and we will have a um, an engaged group of people who are willing to maintain Open Active um, and we want to pilot different ways of working with those people to, to work through those lists, that backlog, backlog of issues and, and, and we want to work out what works best. <clears throat> um, third package of work in the infrastructure block is around continuous improvement of the data infrastructure. So, so initially, this is about stabilization. So at the moment, we have an infrastructure that has largely been maintained by one maintainer in one organization. Um, and that makes us quite vulnerable to that individual stepping away from the initiative. Um, I, I can't comment on how we reach that point, but that, that's kind of a fact of a matter about where we are. Um, we secured some funding from Sport England to mitigate that risk by by completing uh, work that we previously called knowledge transfer. Um, 
Fourth England don't want us to talk about knowledge transfer anymore because they kind of feel like they funded knowledge transfer in phase five. So we've had to do a bit of um, linguistic gymnastics. Um, so we, we're funding some work to make a open, active, maintainable by any suitably qualified person. It's not as catchy as knowledge transfer, um, but you know, funders are peculiar sometimes. Um, so so uh, hopefully in six months time, we will have uh, completed the work we need to complete to make open active maintainable by any seems to be qualified person or knowledge transfer. Um, and, and we will have, uh, we will, that, that work is going to do three things. It's going to get rid of um, code that is no longer required by archiving it and tidying up the code libraries that support open active. Um, it's going to ensure that any outstanding issues are documented. Um, uh, and documented to such an extent any super qualified person could resolve them um, or it's going to actually resolve the issue um, and, and fix the issue if that's quicker than documented. Um, so that package of work has started um, and uh, we'll, we'll continue for the next six months or so. And that will stabilise the, the, the technical infrastructure for open active. Uh, the next step will then be to work out how we develop it in the long term. So the next step will be about developing roadmaps and target architectures for open active over the long term, uh, and then delivering continuous improvements against those those roadmaps. Um, as part of that kind of continuous improvement, there are a few things that we know we need to make better, and we are going to work on those in parallel. So we are doing some work on um, some work on the website hosting at the moment. Uh, we're doing some work on improving the status page. Uh, we're going to do some work on improving the marketplace that connects um, users to suppliers. And we're going to improve the management of the vocabulary. So we did quite a lot of work on the activity list in the last round of funding. We know we need to do something similar with facility types. Um, and actually, we need to try some sort of front end of facility types. So we're going to look at the vocabs as well. And, and we're aiming to do those improvements over the first six months or so of the country. Uh, and then the last area of Workstream 2 is around stewarding the open active data. So in here, we anticipate there'll be a block of work uh, around maintaining and developing the data specifications. In reality, I don't think we'll. I think we'll do everything we can to avoid changes to the specifications themselves, but we think there is stuff we can do with the guidance that wraps around the specifications to make them easier to use um, uh, and to make improve the consistency about how they're applied. Um, we have a bit of an issue that there are quite a lot of feeds that were developed in the early days of open active that haven't been updated to comply with the light, later versions of the specifications. So we'll do some work to support uh, early adopters and transitioning to those later versions of the standards and understanding the barriers and the blockers to doing that. Um, and we will also make more use of the data quality visualizer to engage data publishers in the quality of the content of their feeds as, as well. Um, and we're, we're, and then the last piece in this area is enabling those collectives to interoperate more effectively with other standards. Um, uh, the, one of the examples there is probably open referral, um, but actually looking again at how open access fits with things like schema.org and stuff like that. Um, to deliver that, that fourth package of work, we have re been recruiting for a data steward um, and we are going to interview for that post shortly um, and hope to have someone in post by uh, April, May time, probably May time realistically. Um, but yeah, but we'll have someone with, with those sort of data stewardship skills to lead that, that delivery. <clears throat> um, so work, work package three, which is probably the most relevant for the AEF, is a, around um, use cases. Um, and this is about us, you know, really delivering impact with open active in, across communities, um, helping people understand that open active can help them um, access and understand data about opportunities to take part in physical activity. Um, we did quite a lot of work on this in, in the last phase. We developed the use case framework and we built some use case communities, but we kept coming across this barrier that actually people had lots of ideas, but not very much resource for delivering those ideas. So what we're going to do in, in this extension period is, I think, first of all, we're going to continue to um, convene use case communities and facilitate those use case communities. 
uh, we want to do that in thematic areas, but also perhaps in geographic areas, if we can secure a little bit of extra funding to do that. Um, and we also want to promote the bookcase of the monitoring evaluation and learning components of the use case framework. Um, so we want people using Open Active to use that framework to talk about the benefits they're getting from Open Active. Um, the, the second part of Workstream 3 is about accelerating the delivery of use cases, so getting over that barrier of a lack of resource. Um, and, and what we pitched this for England was that we could run some sort of innovation challenge where once communities or organisations have come up with innovative use cases for Open Active, they could uh, enter the challenge and try and secure some funding to help deliver those, those use cases and to demonstrate the value of those use cases. So the, the, the challenge will be uh, use case based, uh, there'll be an open call for proposals, um, there'll be some sort of assessment process involving the steering committee, uh, and then we will be making um, small financial awards to participants to incentivize them in, in delivering their use cases. Um, and hopefully what we'll see is, is innovation using open active data. Um, and we're going to need help um, designing that challenge. Uh, and, and I can see the EAF being a really useful forum to help us with that, that work. Um, <clears throat> and then the fourth work package, uh, which on the next slide, I think, is all around communications. We really want to um, continue a, a regular drumbeat of communication about the impact that Open Active is having and the work that the project team here with ODI is doing. Uh, we've recognised, though, that some of our engagement with senior stakeholders perhaps hasn't been as good as it should be. Uh, so we're going to start by uh, reviewing our communication strategy uh, and, that, and, and our audiences and making sure we're saying the right things to the right people at the right time. Um, so, so, yeah, uh, communication will carry on as they are, but hopefully in a more focused and targeted way. Um, and then the fifth work package is, is the delivery uh, work package where we have all of our management and monitoring work. Um, you know, th th that's how we keep ourselves on, on a straight line. Uh, and how we understand the impact that we're having. So, so there, that's an overview of the work packages. Um, on the next couple of slides, we dig into that for a work stream three a little bit more for use cases, a little bit more things in. So, yeah, so, so I, I think I've covered most of this already, but I, I think it's really important to to, to, to understand that we we are we have to have a small team rather than have to focus. So, so the kind of priority areas that we have been engaging around, we will continue to engage around. So, so children and young people, disabled people, people with long-term health conditions, um, diverse communities, um, social prescribing, we think is a really big opportunity area for Open Active. Um, and also we've got some really successful engagement in, 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 around uh, pre and postnatal services through the Active Pregnancy Foundation. So we're going to continue engaging with those priority areas building communities who are interested in using Open Active to, to make things better. Uh, <clears throat> we don't have funding for this from Sport England because, um, because they couldn't fit it within their business case, um, but we would like to do some place-based deliveries um, and we're exploring some opportunities at the moment in Cheshire, uh, Wales and Sheffield um, and subject to be able to find some local funding and some, or, or perhaps some local time to make contributions. Uh, we hope to deliver some place-based um, use cases for Open Active. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to promote the use case framework um, so that people understand what it is and how it can work and how they can use it in their, in their work. <clears throat> and then, yeah, the, the, the second bit and, and the really big bit is the innovation challenge. Um, and I think that's a really exciting opportunity for us to drive the delivery of use cases that communities think are viable. Um, and, and Tim will be leading the design of that, and I think it will be a subject this group comes back to. Um, so I think that's a broadly an overview of the extension, um, what we're hoping to achieve. Uh, what I was going to say about it, I, I think we're aiming to break it into the extension into three uh, blocks, three six month blocks, which we're loosely calling marathons. Um, uh, First one, which we're in at the moment, is largely about getting the project started up and stabilising the, the infrastructure. Uh, the second six month block is about um, using that infrastructure, testing new ideas, 
uh, doing that organizational governance design. Uh, and then the third marathon, the third block of six months after Christmas, it'll be uh, about keeping open active going while we transition into that new organizational model, uh, whatever that looks like. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's where we are and what we agreed with Sports England. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, that was great. Um, I think I'll probably just pause at that point and see if anyone on the call has any questions because you've covered, uh, appreciate Andrew covered quite a lot there and there's quite a lot to um, digest. But yeah, if anyone has any thoughts or questions or comments, then then I'll just pause there to give you a chance to raise them to Andrew. Jules is uh, pointing. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> he points at the to chat. At the chat. Oh, at the chat. Okay. Um, um... Ah, so so you've been interested in what we're doing in Sheffield, yeah. So we've been talking. I've had a couple of conversations with the National Centre for Sport and Exercise Medicine, um, who are looking at improving public health in Sheffield uh, through physical activity. Um, they've got some exciting ideas, but they've realised that there is no data about opportunities to take part in sport. Um, they also don't understand where that data could be coming from in Sheffield. Um, so hopefully they will. Hopefully they're going to find some funding to do some data ecosystem mapping, so we can understand the provider landscape, the data provider landscape, and I suppose the activity provider landscape in Sheffield, uh, and then work out how we how they how they prioritise engagement with that community. They can do some of the exciting things they're interested in doing. Okay, it'd be interesting to join up that conversation with one that we've been having across our our nine areas around um kind of the increased use of open open data as well as some of the community level work that we're piloting in bradford yeah. and rotherham um, uh, one of your colleagues that... one of your colleagues was at the meeting that i was at with the nc yeah, yeah. i think so yeah 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 that's fine uh, we, can, we can join any... those That'd Those be good, but they're struggling for money at the moment, I think. That's the their barrier. Yeah, and we've got the Yorkshire moving finder that's powered by played as well. So yeah. The, um yeah, just make sure it's all joined up. So yeah, that's that's fine. I'd I'd welcome that actually. Uh Jules, did you want to add to that? Uh yeah, for the in regard to open referral, I think we had a discussion the other day and we, we realized that we've got sports people and arts people and the arts people are really good at making the case for that activity creative activities but and getting those into the open and filthy but uh sport isn't should we be working together to actually broaden it so we have dancing but singing as well yeah um so there's two angles on that so the first one is getting open active data into open referral. So London Sport have done some work, which I think was demonstrated in AEF last year, um, or maybe the W3C, I forget which one, um, where they have taken all of the open active data feeds for London and batch converts them into open referral feeds. And that data is then instantly available to all of the social prescribing systems that consume open referral. Um, we could implement that nationally in a number of ways. Um, and I think that the, the discussion we need to have with the W3C is what the best way of implementing that is. Um, but we had to have a bit of a pause because open referral, we're having a, a bit of an internal review with um, the department for leveling up um, and they didn't have the capacity to, to engage with us. So I, I think that work with deal is done. And one of the recommendations in that is in fact around how Open referral can take data from other data sharing initiatives like Open Access. Um, so that, that's that's one view. I, th I think the second part, the arts link, um, we did have a couple of approaches from organisations who were interested in applying Open Active to the arts and using the Open Active model to to share data about the arts, um, but they didn't have funding um, because our arts funding is, is is as precarious as sports funding. Um, but they understand what is possible. Um, and I think they understand that open referral doesn't do the whole job. Um, and they think that something based on open access could, could do everything they're intending to do. But yeah, it's that funding question. So. 
Brilliant. Thank you, uh, Jules. Um, anyone else have any other questions for Andrew before we move on? Nope. Okay, cool. So um, the next uh, bit on the agenda, um, which is sort of building a little bit on what Andrew's just been talking about, is um, I wanted to give um, a bit of an update on in a bit more detail about some of the work we've been doing um, as part of that work package three in, re in relation to use cases. Um, and it's sort of a, a two sided, uh, <laughs> um, it both hopefully provides a bit of an update about what we've been doing, but also a bit of a roadmap about some of the topics and themes that um, hopefully we'll be able to cover in a bit more detail in upcoming uh, AEF meetings. Um, and so uh, Andrew, as I said, has touched on a couple of these um, in what he's uh, in what he covered, um, but also um, wanted to pick a few, few out in a bit more detail. So um, the first one is around um, support for women who are going through the various life stages related to pregnancy. Um, and we've been doing um, quite a bit of work for the lot. We've been working with them for maybe about well, five, six months since, since the sort of second half of last year um, with an organisation called the Active Pregnancy Foundation. Um, and in the last couple of weeks, Darren and I, um, my colleague Darren, who's also on the call, and I um, ran a workshop with um, the Active Pregnancy Foundation and a, a group of their stakeholders um, that they work with um, in their networks um, around uh, defining uh, data requirements for that audience. Um, uh, and exactly what kind of information or what data they would need to know about an activity in order to make a, a you know a choice about whether it's appropriate for them um and uh, did also a bit of a prioritization about you know what are the the really high priority um bits of information uh, that audience would need to to know about um an activity so it was a really valuable workshop we got some really really useful insights and, and we've been kind of um, going through a process of summarising those. Um, and as I say, we're hoping to run a session at an upcoming AEF. It might even be the next AEF in four weeks' time um, where we can go through that in a bit more detail. Um, and the kind of main aim of that will then be to um, produce a, a set of recommendations. Um, I think a lot of the uh, things that the, were highlighted by that group are, are things that are already covered by the Open Active specifications, but perhaps um, we can produce uh, some clearer guidance about, you know, exactly what fields are available and how they can be used to, to better display the data and information about activities to, to make sure that the right, the right data is being shared and in, in the right way for it to then be used and consumed and, and displayed in activity finders so so those kind of users and that audience can, can find the information that they need. Um, so that was the first one. Uh, the second one um, has been a sort of similar, similar bit of work, um, but has been um, a bit more sporadic because we've been engaging with a, a large number of organisations around it, and that's um, around uh, disabled people and people with long-term health conditions and, and kind of in a similar way, what information they, they need um, to know about an activity um, and, and whether it's right for them. And there's been a few different um, strands to this area of work. There, there's been partly that kind of data requirements gathering, and we're hoping to run a few workshops and sessions with different groups um, in a similar way to, to the one we did with the Active Pregnancy Foundation to, to better define those data requirements. Um, we've also been looking at some uh, data standards that already exist around accessibility, because uh, as you can imagine, accessibility is a, a much broader issue than just sport and physical activity. It, it could be any kind of leisure or, or um, you know, going to the cinema or, or you know, the, the similar sort of challenges around knowing um, the the accessibility of a venue, um, the uh, the qualifications and and the experience of of people running an event or a session and, and whether they um, have the the right things in place in terms of uh, you know safety requirements and risk assessments and things like that. So all those kind of things. Um, as I say, you can imagine it's much broader than sport and physical activity, and we've been looking at. Um, uh, some other standards and, and whether other things already exist that, that we can um, that we can lean into um, and also working with some organizations to try and get more um, data about 
um, inclusive and uh, accessible activities being opened up. Um, so yeah, quite a few strands of work with that one, uh, and it's been really interesting. I think uh, really valuable so far, and hopefully some um, some positive developments uh, in the upcoming months as well. Uh, the third one in there is um, a bit of work that London Sport again have been doing, which is around um, creating a kind of standard way for for club and organisations to to share data just about their organization rather than going down into the into the activity level um and uh it, this was covered uh, in a bit more detail at the last w3c meeting a couple of weeks ago um so if you uh, dig out the recording of that meeting and have a watch of that um that then yeah there was a, there was a lot of um discussion there um and london sport were on that call sort of presenting about the work that they've been doing um, so yeah, really interesting. Um, some stuff stuff going on there. Um, we think it could be a, a really positive and good way to engage, um, particularly NGBs, um, who might not necessarily um, uh, have activities that they run, but um, you know, will will have uh, data about the the organisations and the locations of organisations that are, that are accredited to them. Um, that could be really valuable and really useful data for for you know being opened up so um and a kind of stepping stone um to get from uh nothing to hopefully getting that activity level data um attached uh, you know further on further on down the line but a sort of stepping stone on that journey uh the next one on the slide is one that andrew mentioned that we've been and done a little bit of work quite recently with um, a, a group of organisations in Cheshire and Merseyside who are working um, on what what they call a all together active strategy, which is a a sort of um, strategy for for a whole range of partners in involved in health and sport and to help more people in in those areas get active. Um, and I presented at a, a sort of session that they had. Um, and there's been a, a couple of follow-ups um, that that we've kind of arranged off the back of that with with different stakeholders that that were at that session. Um, so early days in that one, but um, that sort of speaks to that kind of what Andrew was saying about we're you know we're hoping to be able to do a bit more place place based working alongside the the priority area working. And then the last one I just wanted to pick out and touch on was that we. Um, spoken recently with an organization called Press Red, who provide um, sort of data analysis and visualization um, tools and uh, advice to uh, organizations in the sports sector. Um, and they may mainly work with active partnerships. Um, and we spoke to them about the possibility of using open active data um, in, in some of their mapping tools and, and some of their sort of data visualization tools. Um, as a means to to kind of create strategic insights about um, about places and maybe be able to you know better allocate resources and interventions and, and things like that within within places. So um, yeah, that's just a kind of quite a quick snapshot of of some of the stuff we've been working on in terms of use cases. Um, I think this group this group could be um, really helpful in in highlighting and identifying. Uh, new possible opportunities uh, for use cases and, and communities or groups of organisations that could work on use cases. Um, but also, if you know any of the the different topics or themes or or anything are ones that uh, are particularly interesting to you, or, or any of the work that you're doing, then um, please do uh, kind of get in touch and we can involve you and possibly involve you in some of those conversations and get get you involved in that work. So. Um, yeah, that that was it really. Um, I'll pause there and, and see if anyone has any questions or, or thoughts on any of that. No. Okay. Good. Hopefully that means I I covered it well, rather than just bamboozling people. Um, in which case that that was the kind of last um kind of main item we had on the on the agenda. So um I'll move it on to any other business if if anyone has anything they've been working on, any questions, any comments um on open active um kind of generally or thing, things they would like to raise. Uh Jules. Yeah. 
why is it always Jaws? They always <laughs> say that. Uh, I had a couple of thoughts. How do we get more NGBs onto this? Uh, is anyone working on open jobs? Bit of a random one. And the other one is trying to work out what's going on with uh, England Athletics run feed because there's a lot of NGBs who use Club Spark, but for some reason, that some finders can see a closing date, some can't. Great, thanks, Jules. Um, I can take some some of that. I think uh, that might um, pass over to Darren, who might have some thoughts on the second part as well. Um, so if I can, if I can try and remember <laughs> remember everything you said. So um, what was the first bit you said before open jobs? Uh, uh let's have a look uh ngbs ngbs that was it yeah so that's a really good point and something we would really like to do if anyone has any thoughts then i'd, I'd very much welcome them um active partnerships is a bit easier because you have a very neat and uh wonderful network and a national team that manages that network that is is easy to um to sort of cascade messages out through um whereas the ngbs um don't to, to quite the same extent um but yeah, if um, I'm keen to sort of explore maybe via Sport England, who have kind of um, NGB working groups that, that they have, um, you know, those kind of channels. Um, and possibly if the Active Partnership Network, I don't know if you have a kind of NGB working group that, that you convene um, sporadically. Um, if you do that, that might be another channel we can use. But yeah, it's something I'm really keen, keen to do. Um, and yeah. As I say, very welcome to to any thoughts on, on how to get more um, NGB um, representation at these meetings, because that would be really, really positive, I think, if we can do that. Um, then open jobs, I am not familiar with. I don't know if anyone else on the call is. I think there's lots of blank, blank faces. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not sure we can help you with that one. And then in terms of the... England athletics feed. I think that seems to be um, uh, an issue with the dates on that. Um, Darren, I don't know if you've, I'm not sure Darren's really had a chance to dig into it in much detail. Um, I don't know if you've had anything from Howard, but I think there's maybe a bit of a bit of a standards issue there and a bit of a, a feed issue there that, that we'll need to dig into with England athletics. Um, Darren, did yeah. you have uh, I'm not, I'm not intimately familiar with it. I've just opened it up in our, um, Visualizer Data Quality Explorer, and it's reading through. It's slowly chunking through the pages. We don't know how, what the final page is, but I can see it's um, over the course of two minutes. It's read in twenty pages of the RPD feed. Um, what the how long that'll take to read? I don't know. I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. Might finish within this call. Maybe it'll take a little while longer. And then just starting to look in some of the details, um, just by looking at raw data. Again, hard to tell. They do seem to have uh, some, it could be about historical data that's just hanging around rather than marking certain items as deleted. Um, so it could be that the system is doing more work than it might have to. Um, so they could just be a bit of uh, data quality and clean up there from the publishers. So we'll do some more digging. Um, we'll see what we can find. Oh, and further comment. But the feed is pulled into Sports Week. The session date seems to have passed. Um, uh, any idea why I can't find the word stadium in the feed one together? If, well, if the sessions have passed, but they're still being shown on Sports Week, because within a feed, you can still have past dates, but then it's your duty, I guess, as an app developer, or whatever, to sort of screen for that and only show the end user the kind of present to future dates. Um, a feed can legitimately have things in the past. That's absolutely no problem. Um, as long as you kind of ignore those when you're getting to the final app stage and whoever is wanting to look at the data, then yeah. that's where you, you would do that screening and filtering. So it I, don't... Like I can see on the first link, I can see the sessions in the run together finder. Mm -hmm. When I open, which I assume is the same data in sports suite, it says the dates were passed. And when I've actually looked at the stadium, the, the filter, so the, the actual data feed, Mm -hmm. uh, I can't find the word stadium, so I can't even find this activity that we're looking at Where in it's the, come from. the right. data feed, which is confusing the heck out. Yeah, so Yorkshire Sport Foundation, this is your own website. Uh, this is the back end that we use for 
upload and stop start our public finder okay um i think i'll probably have to we'll have to um take it offline uh howard might have already been doing some digging here i don't know so in which case we're just going to be the will and i'm just poking things on the fly so um we'll we'll continue afterwards i think but it's now kind of in focus but so thanks for highlighting it's why i couldn't because i've got the, the data feed so i'd assume mm. that the word stadium would appear out feed but i couldn't find it, so it looked like the data must be yeah i can see feed. stadium runners bronze pay as you go um i did have a brief look at this a couple of weeks ago i think when it was first flagged but like tim said i think howard did a, a bit further digging since so we might just need to okay. get this as a team and dig in um yeah sorry no immediate answer because that club spark uh, who do that data have tennis athletics hockey cricket squash and try so mm -hmm. that's six system partners who theoretically should be opening the data, but there's something that's stopping it not going across into our uh, Yorkshire moving finder. Yeah, agree. Odd. Um, but anything which is automated, there's there's a reason at the end of the day. There's some logic behind it. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, um, like out the method in the madness. So I think, Jules, this is a really links into something I was going to say in AOB actually really nicely. Um, so, so one of the things that we're really keen to do is to build the conversation that's going on between these meetings. So you'll know that we have an open active uh, Slack instance where anyone can anyone can join and post questions and comments and these are just the sort of juicy questions that that are well received on that slack channel as far, as far as i can tell um but also we've got every single feed provider has a should have a, a issues system a github based issue system for their feed so you can also perhaps post this, uh, this issue on the run together um github against the feed um it should be referenced from the front page uh, of the data feed um so, so I, I think we have lots of tools for asking these sorts of questions. I'm not saying we're not having to discuss them here. We are, but I think those don't forget those tools are there and make use of them as well. And I might get a bit boring as the months go on about using the online tools. Um, so that was my kind of first bit of AOB. Uh, my second bit was about these meetings. So obviously we've we've changed the frequency day structure of these meetings a little bit, but I. I, I particularly for the AEF, so for these meetings to add real value, um, we need to know about what it is you want to talk about at these meetings. So I think the suggestion earlier to try and get more MGBs engaged is a really good one, and perhaps some we need to aim to invite some, make a point of, make a point of inviting some, some MGBs to one of these meetings and have a kind of MGB Q&A or focus session or something. I'm sure we could bring the, some of the bigger MGBs into that. I'm sure they'd be up for that. Um, I, but any topics that you think we should be talking about at this group, please let Tim know. And if you have something interesting that you're working on or a problem you want to discuss, please let Tim know. We, we can use the sessions for discussing those as well. This is your meeting. This, you are the adopters. Um, this is your engagement forum. Um, please help us build a really good quality, insightful, impactful agenda for these meetings. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, really, really good points. And I think uh, I know it wasn't a kind of um, specifically aimed at Jules, but just to to jump to Jules's defence slightly, he he had posted uh, this issue on on the Open Active Slack already. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's he, nice uh, to talk to people. He's yeah, really good at doing that. So yeah, thanks, Jules, and keep keep doing it because uh, yeah. It's uh, as Andrew says, great to to kind of keep these conversations going um, in between meetings. So yeah, uh, gold star for Jules. Um, any other thoughts or points, comments, questions? Emma, I have one question. Um, I met with Dave. I, I think Dave's on this group, but he's not here today. Um, and he was talking about the poster scanning way of uploading um data into that kind of activity finders in the open data feed is that something that is going to feature in the next stage of open like is yeah is that something that's going to feature in the next stage of open active and is that a kind of good way to kind of get community organizations to open their data where they don't have the you know where they only have posters and they don't mm -hmm. kind of have it all uh, in a in a tech 
like technology system or something like that what what's kind of the because obviously I've been off for a while as well what's the thought process around using that method so I think it's I think Dave's work is really interesting and, and I think the tools that he's built are quite compelling um I, I think one of the big questions that we need to try and answer over the next 12 months is what should what what is the core of open active and what should be maintained as part of that kind of core of open active and then what is the ecosystem of mm -hmm. apps that are built around that core um and, and i think there's a question about what should be in the core and what should be out of the core. So the, the other really interesting example of this is um the, 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 the the London Sport Open Sessions application. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could make an argument that actually Open Active in its core should have something like Open Sessions. Um, or you could make a really good argument that actually it's right, that that's, that's, that's an add-on essentially around the edge. Um, I, I don't um, know what the right answer is. I, I suspect something like that product that Dave has built is a product looking for a user. So it, I'm sure if you could find a use case for it, he would be happy to support that. Um, I don't know what his commercial model is for that stuff. Um, but yeah, it, I think at the moment it would probably be on the, on the in, in the universe of applications that surround open active rather than being part of the core. Um, but yeah, I think there's a discussion to have about what the core is and what it should be. Um, mm -hmm. And that's partly what that road mapping piece is about. Um, Did the roadmap include a directory? The club findings. You were talking about uh, self-publishing with <clears throat> Google Sheets a while back. It touches so that actually an organisation yeah, so, that so wasn't the, hinged on live activities. So the club find is kind of a nice test of that discussion about what should be in the core and what should be on the periphery. Um, I, I see the club yes. find thing as part of the user journey. Um, at the moment, if you come to Open Active as a, a new publisher, it's, the user journey is really unclear. And perhaps we need to have a process where your first step in your journey is you you announce your organization exists using something like a club finder the second step is you uh, announce what facilities that you have and then the third step is you announce what opportunities you have at those facilities and we take people on, on a bit more of an adoption journey than at the moment where we say here's all of open active get on with it um so, so i see the club finder as part of that discussion but as, as you as you have those discussions about what these journeys are you have to make these decisions about what is core and what isn't Cool. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and yeah, just to come back to the um, sort of poster um, thing as well, as, as Andrew said, is a really great tool, but there, there are also sort of questions about um, the ease and making it easy for people to add stuff um, versus uh, the kind of quality assurance and safeguarding and things like that, because that's uh, an issue that gets raised quite a lot. Um, and you know, if, if if it's not necessarily the provider themselves that are providing the data, if it's, um, you know, just someone who's seen a poster and taken a picture of it and uploaded it somewhere, then um, there might be questions about, you know, who that organisation is, who's maintaining the data, where the data's coming from, that that kind of thing as well. Um, so, yeah, just to, to add to that. Um, but, yeah, not to um, dismiss it because it is a, is a great tool that Dave's built and really useful and, and um really important to make it as easy as possible for these smaller providers to, to share their data. So yeah, that, that definitely is some um, space for it, I think, but yeah. So there was one thing that needs to be answered as well. There was a kind of a, a kind of two stage system that was mentioned that you could scan it in and then the system would email you saying, we found this, do you mind it going on our activity finder? At least there'd be an opt in mm. filter, which would take out some of those. It would might cut out some of the response, but that's going to be one way of safeguarding you know, people uploading for third party that didn't know they were being published. Yeah, definitely. Um, and um, just a question in the chat from Emma, uh, which I think probably is best aimed at you, Andrew, about um, how uh, people in the community can input into the, into what the core looks like or, or doesn't look. Yeah, so we in the roadmap for the. Uh, in, in, in the work plan for the extension, uh, we have work on roadmaps scheduled in, I think, from late so the second half of this year. Once So once we've done the knowledge transfer work, we then move on to roadmapping. 
Um, and I think at that point, yeah, there will have to be lots of discussions with people. We, we need to understand what it is people want open access to be so that we can then do deliver technology roadmaps that, that meet those requirements. So yes, absolutely. It will be a, will be a, an open discussion around that. Brilliant. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and is there, uh, a, sorry, Joel. Is there anything oh, from Yasmin or Grace? <laughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Grace, is there anything uh, you want to raise? I know we've been talking way too much. Nothing specific for me. I just like to know what's going on, really. Listen to all your interests and thoughts. Same for me, really. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, it's, it's great to have you here. Um, whether you're verbose and full of questions like Jules or just uh, quiet and absorbing <laughs> and everything that's going in, it's, it's great to have you here regardless. So thanks very much for joining. Um, uh, and that goes goes to everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Great, great to have you here. These these meetings, as Andrew said, only only work with uh, with the contributions of everyone and everyone joining in and um, contributing to the discussion. So really appreciate you all joining. And um, thanks very much. Hope you all have a um, good rest of the day and um, look forward to hopefully seeing you again in four weeks' time for the next day.